What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic, and today I wanted to try and build a different style of piston engine than what we've been doing. I mean, we've been building a lot of these inline styles, there are a ton of different styles. We also gotta start putting them in cars, I've realized. I've done a lot of engines recently, and I'm getting pretty good at them, but we need to start putting them in vehicles, working on transmissions, gearing, that sort of thing, differentials. Uh, but this is like the standard one that we've been using. It's kind of nice in line four, right? Puts out 300 RPM. It's great, everything. And I made an expanded version of it. And just because I don't know how the performance is different. So this one, you can see we've got all the pistons right next to each other. And there's no glitch welding to do this. It's just you have to get them, you know, kind of built a little special. Because on the lift, obviously you can't, you can't build like that. But, you know, they can, uh, they can be done and all that. And, and it works out great. Uh, but I made an expanded version because I want to build an engine that's more comparable to this. And it's still got all the same settings, the same, you know, controller, 55 degrees, all that nonsense. It's just a little bit bigger. So what I want to try and do today is build a piston engine where the pistons don't move. And this is going to be really kind of like a car engine. And you can see from the side here, the pistons move left and right on an angle, right? They kind of go back and forth and they rotate the drive shaft. But at the end of the day, piston cars in real life don't do this. They have an extra little rod there that comes off the piston and the rod moves back and forth. But the piston only goes up and down um, for, you know, reasons. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting that we never really do that in scrap mechanics. So I wanted to try and build one of those where the pistons are actually stationary still modeled after this kind of engine but we're going to have an extra little connecting rod between the end of the piston and the drive shaft now that's going to give us an extra bearing um and we're also gonna have to worry about the fact that it's got to clip through the shaft some well we can put pistons along the shaft actually so that's fine but anyway it's gonna give us an extra bearing i'm, I'm curious to see what it does i don't think it's gonna necessarily be better but that's why we've got this one to compare it to and you know we're just gonna try it out because i thought it might be cool to actually build a realistic car engine rather than this swaying back and forth stuff which obviously for scrap mechanic reasons i think this is you know the way to go but um in real life we we don't do that first thing we're just gonna we're just gonna literally just start by putting these oh wait no that's right this doesn't swivel ha that's funny we just have a piston it's literally just a mounted piston and then we have to put that mounted to a connecting rod like this and the connecting rod has to be three long i think i mean we could realistically make this as long as we want the piston's got to move three this has to be probably at least three we could make it longer um i don't know this is now see now this gets interesting because this would make a difference the shorter we make this the steeper the angle it's going to be at the longer we make it the shallower the angle it's going to stay at so if we have it super long then it'll be a really really shallow angle which theoretically would deliver torque better but the piston's always linear so you've got like an angle calculated here so you're gonna lose a little bit of force on this angle and you lose a little bit on that i i don't know let's you know let's try it like this and and see how this goes this has to connect up to our t-piece which is the actual drive shaft we're not gonna put any like locks on this or anything and then we need a basically a piston here to hold that so this can clip through that um and then this has to hit another piece of drive shaft and then rotate like so and then repeat is this see now this this whole thing is actually longer Ah, oh, shoot see i need a rotation bearing here with this piston you know what let's just build the rest of this and then see how it looks and then we'll go from there but yeah i might have to expand that one out a little bit more i really want to try and do like as close to a comparison test as we can and i think that the longer you have the more space you have between pistons like that might make a difference i don't actually know but yeah in order for me to get this shaft to rotate 90 degrees i have to basically space it like that which which means we need an extra spacing yeah that is a little unfortunate i'm a pretty big fan of it already but yeah i don't i don't know if this is gonna work i feel like this is impractical obviously we could uh i don't know how how we could compact this more maybe if we glitch stuff inside of itself anyway it doesn't matter all right let's uh let's get these last couple ones done here i'm excited i this is like just such a cool concept to me to actually build like a real life sort of car engine style instead of just doing the uh the typical scrap mechanic thing over and over again obviously this isn't real um in real life you'd have the the basically the the uh on the bottom of the piston there's like a separated piece and it wraps around the entire shaft and that's how that works we don't really have this and you could basically unbolt the bottom piece and then pop it off both sides of the shaft the two halves come off all right so we need one more here oh my god this is uh this is super bulky now 
This is not what I was intending, but anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, so that goes to there. This is an interesting looking thing. Okay, perfect. And then this goes through one more piston and then we'll put it to here. And then this can go to a bearing and then onto the encoding wheel. Oh boy. This is, uh, yeah, dang. I, I should be able to just break this and add extra parts. I mean, I don't really know how much it's going to matter to have it as three versus two. I mean, to me, it feels like the one even has better performance. Like, this one seems like it's faster than this one, but maybe they're the exact same. Like, who actually knows? It's it's really, really hard to tell. I, I honestly don't know. Maybe I'll just run all three of these and see if there's even a drop between those two and then see how this thing works out. I, before, I don't know if rebuilding it to be three is going to make a difference. Like, obviously, there's going to be a, like, give on the shaft. Like, more, more play because it's longer, maybe? Like, I, I don't honestly know. Scrap mechanic bearings are, like, a really weird thing because bearings are strong, but they're also not. Like, they basically will slide laterally across each other, so they rotate, and that's great, but the fact that they move laterally, so, like, left and right, and they don't stay, um, you know, aligned. Oh, this just, no, this is right. This is a hollow shaft. But, yeah, it, it, that's the problem, is it's, like, how do you, how do you deal with scrap mechanic bearings and their nonsense? And then we just gotta kind of program this whole thing and see if it actually spins. It's, it's exciting. They're, we're building pretty standard engines. I gotta work on a boxer engine at some point, and a lot of you guys have suggested I go back and look at the explosive engine again, which I'm down to do. I did an explosive engine, I think, twice. But the problem with the explosive engines is, uh, surprise, surprise, they blow up the blocks around them. So getting them to actually, like, do something is kind of a pain. Um, but I could revisit that at some point. And the explosion radius is big. Maybe I could use, like, a, a mod spawner and spawn in really small explosives. Because you need some sort of a spawner. Alright, so this is our setup. Let's, uh, let's wire some stuff up here. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not terribly confident about how this is all gonna go, but... Uh, let's pretend. So one, two, three. There we go. These all have to be 90 degrees to each other. Okay, so, so far, so good. That's awesome. We're going to put these all to three and leave them on slowest for now, just to see if we can get some actual rotation going. Uh, we're going to bring one of these guys. We'll just actually put this guy right next to this. I should be able to just copy all the same sensor positions if I have the wheel painted the same. And then we just gotta wire them up in the exact same order. Normally when I set up the wiring, I usually cut out the part where I just sit there and just guess over and over again until I get it to rotate. I don't really apply logic to sort of where these need to be in what <laughs> position. I just kind of go, eh, and now it's rotating perfect, fine. And then, I mean, the one thing you do know is that they do sort of move linear because they're all 90 degrees offset from each other. So if you get the first sensor right, then all you got to do is just like each sensor goes to the next one down the line. Um, but in this case, this one's the first one, and then this one's the last one. And then, yeah, so this one is last. Okay, so this one goes to here, and then this one goes to here and then here, and then there. And then theoretically that should just work. Oh boy. Uh, oh, right, right. These need to actually be set to a color mode. I was like, why are we just bending the whole shaft down? Although it wasn't a good sign that the entire shaft just bent, but anyway, okay. All right, so we're, 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 we've got it turned on. Let's go to zero degrees on this. Cause I don't, I don't know if we can well, look at that. Okay, that's like, that's so cool. That's so, that's so cool. I mean, it really, it really is. There, that's like an actual car engine now. That is so cool. I need to figure out how to make this shaft smaller. Like, there's an extra block in here I need to be able to... See, you need this clip through. The The reason we use these pistons is because, you know, this the shaft, it doesn't wrap around it, right? So this would need a clip through point. And we're using that as a clip through basically connection. But if I could combine that with the 90 degree bearing, then we could make it one smaller per section. Each section does have to be too wide no matter what, because you need the offset for the, the the vertical rod, right? The con rod needs an offset. Oh man, that's so cool. That's just so neat that it actually like works. But yeah, I need to figure out a way. I don't know if you guys know in the comments down below. I'm sure there's someone in the glitch welding community who knows how to do this. I need to basically combine this piston with that 90 degree piece so that it's one one block smaller. And we can make this engine just a little bit smaller. Not much smaller, 
We definitely can't make it this small because we need the extra space, but we can do these at least two. Oh, that looks, I'm sorry, that looks so cool. Okay, you know what, let's turn it off. Let's crank these up to max. Everyone wants to know, max speed also means maximum power. So what does this do? Ooh, ooh, that looks so chunky. Okay, now we probably need it on like 55. No, that's, oh, it got better at 60. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 60 degrees, what about 75? Oh, that looks good. I don't know, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so cool looking. Oh man. That is, that is the neatest thing. Now, the only thing that's different with this and a real car engine is a real car engine, the pistons don't go one at a time. They sort of go, um, you know, two and two. Like, it would be the inside two usually at the same time and the outside two. And then because it's a four-stroke, they're not all firing. Like, the firing order would still be like one, three, four, two, or one, three, two, four, or something like that, whatever. But in terms of the actual movement, you'd see these two going up and down at the same time because they're only firing every half. Right? This is more like a two-stroke, really, because we get a fire on every stroke, right? So every stroke, we're providing power with one of these pistons, but in real life, we're not doing that. In a real-life four-stroke engine, half the time, your piston's going up and not actually getting any power. It's exhausting gas and then pulling in fuel, compressing the fuel, and then boom, it gets that one power stroke and then repeat, right? So it's only one power stroke every four, every four, well, every two rotations, but every four cycles, you know? Whereas these are, these are basically, we're making two-stroke engines, essentially. But, uh, this thing's sick. I can't believe how- how awesome this is. Like, this is so cool. It's actually working with Conrods. And now we could just, like, expand this out further. We could make a V as well if we had two attachment points to that same thing. Although, they would clip into each other. That's- that's- that's so cool. I can't believe that works as well as it does. All right, let's hook these up to the dyno. Let's do some, let's do some dyno testing. We know what this guy does. Um, it's like, I don't know, we can, we can hook up to the dyno anyway, just because. But I'm pretty sure it's going to give us the same results as the other one. Um, we, we've done this torque test before. All right, so there we go. Get that on. Now, we don't have a flywheel on any of these engines, so uh, there is that. You know, I know people say I should always have a flywheel, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. All right, let's fire this guy up. It's only doing 250 RPM for some reason. And, well, it's jumping all over the place. Interesting. Anyway, let's fire it up on the dyno. It's at 55 degrees. Which is what we got last time as, like, the ideal. 58 horsepower, 2400 newton meters. Okay. It's pretty. It's a pretty nice curve. It makes a nice curve. 58 horsepower, 2500 newton meters. 2400 before it died. Just break that off. Yeah, that's 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 great. We're gonna hook this into a car sometime. We're gonna do we're gonna do a test at one point where we, we need to work on some transmission systems, and then we need to measure losses across transmissions and really figure out the way to uh, to make proper transmissions on cars. That's gonna be the next big thing. Anyway, let's slap this guy on here. All right, so this is the exact same engine, theoretically 55 degrees. Everything should be the same. Uh, the only difference is there's now two spaces instead of one. So theoretically, we should get the same results. 300 RPM still seems about right. Should be like 2200 newton meters of torque, 53 horsepower, 50 horsepower, 1500 newton meters of torque, 1600 newton meters of torque. Holy cow, there's that much of a difference from one block. See, this is what I was talking about with scrap mechanic. Because we have that extra block, there's now a different like leverage on each of the bearings. You can see like the gap between the bearings. So that's interesting. Instead of 2200, it went to like 1600. This is like all nonsense. It's just jamming through. But yeah, this flat line pretty much stopped at 1600. So, that, so we do lose a little bit of power. That is, that's actually kind of unfortunate because that means with this setup where we've got three, we're technically going to lose more power to the shaft bending, essentially, is what's happening, I think. But, uh, I don't know, let's try it out. I'm curious to see if this even gets 300 RPM, like the other ones did. Okay, there we go, perfect. I'm just excited to have honestly built, like, a real car engine. I think that's so fantastic. Here we go, okay, so... Um, this one's at... 75 degrees it seems slower right off the bat 200 rpm okay well maybe we can play with the angle a little bit here 55 was the ideal for the last one on the timing wheel see i feel like the timing's gonna be a little bit different now because you've got a bunch of other stuff going on like technically speaking you've got the uh the play on the bearings up here as well as the play on the bearings down there and then you've got the extra shaft play and obviously this would be different with longer con rods too, which is like, I, I really want to, I really want to try that too at some point and, and just put longer con rods on it and see what kind of differences we get. But I gotta, 
you know, figure out how to make a better version of this. 218, that's pretty good. At 60, what does 45 give us? Just reset that again. Does 45 get us anything better than 218? 215? 218? Yeah, not, not so much. Seems like it's like in that 60 range. What about like if I go back to zero? Yeah, it's chunky. All right, let's go to 60. Let's leave it at 60. Seems like that was the spot. Bearings are annoying in Scrap Mechanic. It would be really nice if bearings had like a perfect 100% rigidity because then it would really change the losses that we get in these kinds of systems. But anyway, let's run this torque test. I don't expect it to get much torque. I think there's too many bearings. Um, I think it's gonna, I think the, the torque is gonna eat it pretty quick. But let's see. It goes up to almost 2,300 Newton meters. Wow. So it does, it actually gets the same amount of torque as the other one, a little bit less horsepower because it's got less RPM, but it actually gets the same torque value. That's insane. That's actually really, really good. It's going to reset again. There it goes. Unbelievable. Yeah, it gets up to like 23, 2400 before it stalls for the first time. And then it just kind of powers through the stall point. 47 horsepower. All right, now we got to start making engines that put out more than 47 horsepower. I got to like make an engine that can finally get above the 100 horsepower range. Because that's like the biggest thing. I haven't really conquered the 100 horsepower hurdle. Haven't really conquered, you know, the 1000 RPM hurdle either. I feel like those are the two big hurdles we've still got to get to. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This is cool. This is, I'm so glad this works as, as well as it does. I honestly thought these barriers were going to freak out and it wasn't going to have a good time, but I love that this works the way it does. The only issue, of course, is, is this extra block. Like I said, if you guys know a way to combine the bearing and piston into one, that would be phenomenal, but you can't uh, put a bearing on a piston as far as I know, but that would save us a little bit of space on the engine. And then, of course, uh, you know, you'll, you'll lose because of all the extra the bearings and stuff but we could play around with bigger cod rods we could also play around with different piston setups and like we gotta start playing around with like boxers and and v setups and stuff because there are reasons that boxers and v's exist in real life and it would be cool to actually try them in scrap mechanic although like i said we're building two strokes we're not we're not really building a single four stroke everything in scrap mechanic is a two stroke but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time